Hello, Coloma Elementary. This is Mrs. Stankowitz. I hope you're having a super summer, doing something fun, enjoying your time off. And be rested and ready to come back to learn. All right, as you can see, I have one of my favorite books. It is I Need My Monster. Need My Monster, written by Amanda Knoll, illustrated by Howard McWilliam. Tonight, when I looked under the bed for my monster, I found this note instead. Gone fishing, back in a week, Gabe. What was I going to do? I needed my monster under my bed. How was I supposed to get to sleep? if my monster was gone. I tried to sleep, but it wasn't the same without Gabe. I missed his ragged breathing, his nose whistling, the scrabbling of his uncut claws. How would I ever get to sleep without Gabe's familiar scary noises and spooky green ooze? It was no use. Gabe would be gone for a week. I just had to have my monster. I, I climbed quietly out of bed so my parents wouldn't hear me. Grown-ups have some strange ideas about monsters under beds. I knocked on the floorboards, then scrambled back under my covers. I waited nervously. Would a new monster appear? What would he be like? Would he be what is snorting? be as cheerful as Gabe's. When I heard some creaking under my bed, I knew that the substitute monster had arrived. Good evening, said a low, breathy voice. My name is Herbert, and I will be your monster for the evening. Herbert? What kind of a name is that for a monster? You don't sound scary. It's not scary at all. Have you ever scared a kid before? Well, no. I, but I have read all the best books on the topic. Do you have long teeth and scratchy claws? I asked. No, but I have an underbite. And I'm a mouth breather. Listen. <laughs> Herbert's panting it was kind of scary. But it wasn't enough for me. Listen, Herbert, I'm sorry. I just don't think this is going to work. It's nothing personal. But I really need a monster with claws. Picky, picky, Herbert complained. As you wish, I'll go. Then there was more, some more creaking. Then Herbert was gone. Some scratching warned me that a second monster had appeared. Good evening, he said with a, with a sigh, with a high, silky voice. My name is Ralph. I understand you need a monster with claws. If you would please lean over, I will hold out my arm for inspection. I crouched on the edge of the bed, hoping to see a horrible, shaggy arm with sharp, ragged nails. Instead, I was surprised to see sleekly brushed fur with smooth, shiny claws. Excuse me, I don't mean to be rude, I asked, but is that nail polish on your claws? Yes, it is, Ralph replied. I believe a professional monster should be well-groomed. I could, <laughs> I could tell this was not going to work either. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Ralph, but I need a monster with scary claws. Like Gabe, I thought. I heard some more scratching, and I knew Ralph was gone. A minute later, I, a third voice from under the bed rasped. Check out these claws, kid. I gathered my courage, and I peered over the edge. The claws were impressive, jagged, and dark, and razor sharp. 
So far, so good. I was a little nervous. Could you stick out your tail? I whispered. Sure. But don't get scared. I peeked through my fingers at the slimy tail slithering over the foot of my bed. That's when I noticed the bow. Are you a girl monster? Of course I am, she snapped. I'm Cynthia. Do you have a problem with that? Um, yeah, I do, I admitted. I definitely need a boy monster. Boy monsters are for boys. Girl monsters are for girls. Everybody knows that. Well, aren't you the picky one, she sniffed. And then she was gone. Was I being too picky? No. I knew that my monster needed to be well-clawed and menacing. The whole point of having a monster, after all, was to keep me in my bed, imagining all of the scary stuff that could happen if I got out. Then I heard a shuffling noise and some slobbering. A fourth monster was under my bed. Hey, my name is Mac. One look at his claws proved that Mac was a big, scruffy boy monster. I shivered. Maybe this was the one that would work. Though those are excellent claws. Do you have a big, uh, a long tail? I leaned over to see. No, my tail is dumpy, Max slurped. But I do have an unusually long tongue. Why would I be afraid, afraid of a long tongue? I asked. Oh, I don't know, he said, trying to sound terrifying. You never know if I might lick you. I fell back on my bed laughing. Well, I don't. If you're going to not even not try to work with me, Mac whined. I held in my giggles. I really don't think you should send me away, he warned. Kids who reject five monsters in one night. I did not reject five monsters tonight, I interrupted. My regular monster went fishing. Fishing, eh? Maybe he just left because you're so picky. Fine, I'm out of here. But I wouldn't expect another monster tonight if I were you. How was I going to ever get to sleep without my monster? I was surprised to hear more creaking under my bed. Loud creaking with scratching. Uh, I thought no more monsters were going to appear tonight, I said. Sorry, kid. Sorry I'm late. Phew. It was game. I thought I would enjoy fishing, but I didn't, he explained. Those fish scare too easily. No challenge at all. You, however, are challenging, my friend. You're almost too old to be afraid of monsters. You keep me on my toes. Ah, toes. A delicious snack. The bed quivered as Gabe's stomach rumbled with hunger. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to start the evening with an ominous puddle of drool. I peeked over the edge of the bed. Green ooze spread soundlessly under my bed. Then the bed trembled as Gabe unfurled his spiked tail. He was daring me to guess where he might pop up. I shivered. So, you had some substitute monsters tonight, Gabe said, sharpening his claws on my bedpost. Were you scared? 
Then Gabe started tapping. I could tell he wanted to know if I still needed him. No other monsters scare me like you, I giggled, diving under my covers and pulling them up tight. Through, through the blanket, I heard Gabe's soft, comforting snorts. Ha! I knew it. We're made for each other, he growled. When my blanket started to slip off the bed, I knew Gabe was ready to eat. Now, if you could please stick out your foot, he said. I'd like to nibble on your pinky. I yanked the blanket back up and scrunched my feet in so Gabe couldn't get them. No toes tonight, but you can have this, I offered, pushing the pillow off the bed. I didn't even hear it hit the floor. Gabe was back. The ooze was perfect. Everything was back to normal. I shivered again. I'd be asleep in no time. Thank you for letting me read to you, and I hope to see you in the fall. This is Mrs. Stankowitz. So long.